Hey there, fellows. So I saw this really neat picture recently. This would definitely be the first time I've seen something like this. And of course we've been getting requests to replicate it, fit it to a car, see whether it's even possible to make in the first place. Once we install it, we can appreciate the look and go out for a drive naturally, or at least try. Wouldn't that be sweet? Now, I guess you might be able to get away with actually using these, for example, at a car show, if you want that sick negative camber. In any case, we are really curious to try this out, and we've brought this fabulous motor vehicle in from outside for the purpose. It's all frozen up, as you can see. But then, hey, no surprise, we are in Siberia. So we've brought this one in, and it's gonna be our test bed. It's a classic rear-wheel drive Lada, which has a live rear axle. And the problem with that is, it's not gonna allow you to get any negative camber. I mean, it's not like you're gonna cut the axle or bend the hubs on it, right? to place the wheels at an angle. And so I expect this to be a pretty interesting experiment. We'll have a look at how they fit, what they do to the appearance of the car, and then some of you might even be able to guess what's keeping us from achieving dramatic angles when doing things the right way and uh, hacking the suspension. The problem with that when you're working with the driven axle, and it doesn't matter whether it's the front or the rear, is that you've got axle shafts, CV joints and such. They're the main limiting factor because they're restricted in their movements. It simply isn't going to work, I mean, you do need the car to be able to move, right? But then if you don't need the car to move, in that case, I guess you can use something like this. And so let's go ahead and make us a set of four spacers, fit them to this car, have a look at it, and after having that look, I do think we'll try driving on them. Let's do this. Fellows, on behalf of the entire Garage 54 crew, I'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And of course, don't forget to wish Happy Holidays to your own friends and relatives. Now, if you're looking for some cool gift ideas, check out the latest lineup of merch in our online shop. We're offering some trendy hoodies, neat-looking hats, baseball caps, an assortment of mugs and stickers, as well as an entire line of car accessories. Some of you were asking for kids-sized t-shirts, and now we got them. With some cool art. So treat yourself and your loved ones to some Garage 54 holiday goodness. Place an order before the new year and you'll receive a nice little extra surprise from me personally. Hit the link in the description. And don't forget to use the code G2022, which is good for a solid discount. Okay, check out what we've got here. A set of nifty spacers. Yeah, they look pretty... I mean, here's what a normal spacer looks like. It's all nice and even. You slap it onto a hub, cover it with a wheel, no problem. But this looks pretty suspect. Now, each of them has four bolt holes. Now, look here. After a bit of thought on how we go about this, We've decided to stick to the path of least resistance. Let me show you something. I'm gonna draw me a spacer. That's the normal type. Here you have one surface where you mount the wheel, and here's the other one for mounting the spacer itself to the hub. So all of that is looking good. And here we have the bolt holes. They're precisely perpendicular. But here's the problem with this one. When you've got a spacer that looks like this, one that's angled. Here we have the hub, and now to mount the spacer, 
The bolt holes have to be at a 90 degree angle relative to the hub. And it's the same story on the other side. To get the wheel mounted, the holes have to be at 90 degrees relative to the mounting surface. But hey, we always find some kind of solution. I'm sure we'll find one this time too. Alright, let's fit a wheel and see what this looks like. And so after fitting a wheel, look, here's the spacer. And the angle seems big enough. It's very similar to what we saw in that photograph. However, here we've mounted a wheel using just one bolt. The angle is barely noticeable. What a bummer. How did this happen? When the wheel rotates, yeah, you immediately notice that something's up. But if... Stop! If we stop the wheel here, in this sort of position, you can clearly tell that with the lower part pushed in, the upper edge pushed out, yeah, it's very obvious that you have some excess positive camber happening. But when you flip it around, into the correct position, for whatever reason, you don't notice any difference. And that is quite irritating. We need to solve the problem somehow. From the looks of it, there is really no point in modifying the ones we already have. Raise this, sidetrack that. Time to start thinking. I mean, we have to think of something. Since we've already started on this path. We obviously can't use two of these to make a sandwich because we've drilled the holes relative the mounting surface to the hub. Okay, now I guess it's time to start looking for some kind of alternative solution. Okay, so we've made a new set. Look at these. As you're about to see, this is a completely different ball game. The angle is way more dramatic, and they're much further away from the hub. If the old ones were, what, 40, 50 mil? These are a good 130 on the tall side. We had to machine a groove in order to be able to mount this to the hub. Now here, given the angle, if we were to drill these holes like we did on the flange side, I'm afraid we wouldn't have been able to mount the wheel to this. But then we found a way to make it work. We placed them at an angle and successfully drilled the holes. Now begins the tricky installation process. From the looks of it, we'll have to remove the brake drums in the back. Otherwise, we won't even be able to mount a 14-inch wheel. As for the front, well, we haven't even gotten to that yet. But I can tell you right now that the main issue is the caliper. It might cause us a bit of trouble. But then, hey, we'll see what happens once we start mounting all of this up. Okay, let's grab the spacers and fit them to a car. There we are. Check out the results. This looks pretty... I'll move away so you can also see the back wheel. The angles are looking pretty good. Wouldn't this look awesome if we slammed it? But then even if I press on this corner... Yeah, it looks nice. But there is a slight problem. In that the car is stuck. It can't move. We can't even roll it around. Even though we're using a 14-inch wheel, the spacer is 130 mil. That's if 
we measure it by the tall side. So even with the spacer, the wheel still touches the brake caliper, which prevents it from rotating. Even just to install it we had to add. So we have the 130 mm spacer in there. And on top of that we had to fit a few thin ones. Both of them 30 mm thick. Otherwise we wouldn't have even been able to mount them on the car. Now all these spacers are really good for is making the car look cool. To give it a sort of unique flavor. Personally, I've never seen anyone do this sort of thing to a rear-wheel drive Lada. And hopefully I never will. So let me show you what we've done. Up front we've returned everything back to stock form, and back here we have flipped the wheels. That's in order to prevent them from scraping. So the wheel is inside out, which will allow it to rotate with no trouble. I'm beginning to understand why the people have been asking us to install the wheels in such a manner, for them to wobble in all conceivable directions, to test their off-road ability, of course. Now, the track has definitely gotten wider by as much as we've spaced the wheel from the hub. And then, if we account for the wobble, the tire is a 185 section, but this has to bring it up to like 400 and something. Now, we tend to weld the diffs on these cars to ensure that two wheels always rotate for the car to be punchy and accelerate well. So yeah, it's done for traction and for the car to drive well. However, in this case, with the experiment we're conducting, we won't be welding the diff on this one. We need to test the concept properly, am I right? And then not everybody can or is willing to weld the rear diff to ensure both wheels spin simultaneously. Okay, well, I am very curious whether it'll even drive. But we are about to find out. Let's do this. Wow, I'm scared now that I started the car. All right. The moment of truth. I'm off. There we go. It isn't even shaking all that much. What am I hitting? I'm guessing the fenders? All right, then. See that? Once they've hit some kind of rhythm, I'm assuming they're in such a position that they're rocking simultaneously. Though I can't see from in here. I don't even have any rear-view mirrors. It actually drives reasonably well. It's a far cry from when it was all four wheels and the car was hopping down the road. Man, the amplitude of the rocking keeps changing. That's curious. And that's with me driving down a good road. It's been cleaned, it's nice and smooth. But we wanted to find out what it's gonna do on a rough road. Well, I'm about to go somewhere no one ever drives. That'll immediately help us understand... Seems like they've synchronized. Well, it goes. And it even feels like it has decent traction. Oh my goodness. But I want to make the wheels spin. This seems like a good spot. Nope, got stuck. Seriously? But then, I mean, what can I say? I got stuck, I got out. But I think I've driven myself into another snowdrift. Stay away from the barrier. Better avoid hitting it. And the journey continues. 
Now in the moment, when the car just begins to roll, you're not even thinking that there might be something wrong with the wheels. Like for the first 30 to 40 centimeters. That's me driving between the grooves straight through the snow. Oh wow, it is really moving. But come on, like... What the... How? You'd think that there's nothing special to these wheels. My guess is that they sort of dig into the road? Right, let's find a place to flip around. It's about time, I'd say. Oh, those dogs look frightened. But then I wouldn't be surprised if these people get scared. Okay, then. Okay, it's planted. They're either doing this, or this, or this. I can't tell from here. Wow, I like how it sets off. It's so smooth and pleasant. Plus, there is no wheel spin uphill or in potholes. Like, none whatsoever. The car is just moving. Well, I guess we've tested their off-road ability then. Which is nice. I mean, yeah, it isn't a comfortable ride. You are getting a bit shaken up inside the car. But then what can you do? Is it down to them not creating a wedge in front of themselves? Could that be the reason that these wheels grip so much better than usual? Wow, this is all very curious. Very curious indeed. Look at how it hops. And how it digs. Nope, I wanted to say and how it drives. Then again, we did make it this far. Doesn't want to back up. What if I were to take it slowly with no wheel spin? There's a bit of slip. Okay, let's drive forward then. Nope, they're spinning. But then the engine response tells me they're loaded up more than regular tires would be. Why did it stall? Why'd you stall? Aw oh man, look at how it's digging in and kicking up chunks of snow. But it appears that it's digging with just one wheel. If it gets out, I will be very surprised. It's as if... We're running tires with some aggressive tread. Isn't that something? Oh, wow! It dug the whole place up, and it made its way out. Okay, fellows, let's discuss the results. We'll start with the fact that we only had spacers in the back, and the camber is all over the place. And so they have quite a bend. I mean, they have quite a wobble to them. And so when we got to the off-road testing, overall they did well, most likely because... Good catch, by the way. So when a wheel is planted normally, it simply rotates. And as soon as it hits some ice, it begins to slip. And though the studs in your tires might be trying to do something, but they almost immediately cut themselves some grooves in the ice, and that's it, you're stuck. But here things work quite differently. The wheel is constantly swinging left and right, also the car is rocking, and finally the tire isn't heating the surface underneath the contact patch, therefore not digging itself deeper in. And man, do they dig well. Now, I might be wrong, if so, please correct me in the comments, but I think that with one edge gripping and then the other, I mean, there were chunks flying, and it wasn't just the snow, it was also dirt. I was like, holy cow!
How was it able to dig down so fast? I mean, yeah. They do a much, much better job than a wheel that's mounted normally. I mean, these spacers are very effective. I mean, yeah, the ride is uncomfortable. At times, they were getting into a weird rhythm. What with the car having an open diff. And as a result, you're getting tossed around. But then again, it's not as bad as if we had them mounted like this at all four corners. What matters is they work 107%. But now I'd like to discuss these spacers. Honestly, I don't even know why we made them. They're totally useless. But these... If you're the type who likes to surprise or even scare bystanders, well... The toll side is 130 mil. Right here we've machined a groove in order to mount it to the hub. These holes... We drilled them through a regular spacer to get them 90 degrees relative to the surface. That's so we can fit the wheel to it, obviously. And well, you guys saw how much it improved the look of the car. Imagine this on a nice set of rims. That'd be sick. And that's all I have for you, fellas. Watch us, subscribe, suggestions, comments, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.